Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Burger, my one of my favorite TikTok creators, YouTube creators, and Twitch streamers. Um, and I'm really excited to have this conversation with him. Uh, I've been watching him for quite a long time on TikTok. I get a lot of Warzone content from you, so I appreciate you spreading your content out to the world. And uh, first, I want to start off with how are you? And I know uh, many people know that you've been uh, sick for a while, but I want to know how you said that today is like your first day that you've been able to do things. So how's that going for you? And, um, how, how are you feeling? Mentally, I've been, I've been pretty good the whole time. I, I feel great. I've been in a really good spot, you know, building a good mindset for everything that I'm doing, but physically, I don't know what happened. Uh, I saw a bunch of doctors and, and we talked about it before, but mm-hmm. I saw like four or five doctors, ear, eye, neurologist, MRIs, all that kind of stuff. No answers from that. Um, doctor thinks either some sort of concussion or just wearing myself out. I don't know, but I literally couldn't do anything for like three weeks. So today was like my first day of like, okay, I'm back in my routine. And I still feel a little off, but I'm happy to be back for sure. Yeah, and you, you said, uh, I'm, I'm doing fantastic, man. I We've just been grinding out the podcast, trying to do things behind the scenes and and uh, trying to pull some different guests. I'm trying to get. I'm, I bet I reached out to Sally, but Ooh, we, a good one. But we we don't have a response in that. But we're working on it. We're working on it. Um, and you mentioned that you uh, you have had good mental health through all this. Um, yeah. And is that important to you? Is that something that's like that you stressed on yourself? from the beginning when you weren't able to do things to keep a good mindset about stuff like this? Yeah. I mean, I've always, always, always been kind of more of a analytical person. So I take my, you know, my mental health very seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple times with, like over the past few weeks that I kind of hit rock bottom, but it, it's not like something that I don't bounce back from. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew that eventually it would pass. I tell people this all the time when I get DMS, they'll be like, sad about their life or whatever it is and i'm like no matter what no matter what it is it always always passes eventually and you look back on it and i i was just thinking earlier like literally right before i came home and got on the computer i was like this is one of the best things that's ever happened to me because now i'm just refreshed back with a a whole new outlook on what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and sometimes like it's almost like a blessing in disguise like who's to say that there wouldn't have been something else that like pushed you over the edge and it could have been worse. Like having a good outlet or outlook on, on things like this is definitely, it's definitely going to help you win in the long run by giving you this break. Um, and kind of just like you said, being refreshed. I think that's, that's good for, for the longevity of things. And, um, how do you, do you, do you usually keep a good good mental health state while you're like in the go 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 type of mood like where you're just normal is that like is that something that you are able to do Mm -hmm. yeah i would say pretty consistent i mean obviously everybody has their their bad Mm -hmm. days but for the most part pretty solid is it is it something that you try to um like if you're if you're having a day where like it's down are you are you still pushing through to to stream and do things like that or are you willing to like just be like all right i need a day for a breather yeah i mean sometimes i'll take like a day off or like if i if i need if i need to most of the time i'll just cut my stream a little bit short Mm -hmm. make it like a two hour stream and then take it light on all the editing and stuff for the day and just sit down and watch a movie or something that's usually my go-to yeah um, but I mean, I like what I'm doing. It's not like I'm force forcing myself. So even when I'm in a bad mood, I'm, I would much rather be doing this than, you know, my last job or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And so. do you, uh, do you do all your like editing stuff yourself? Yep. Everything, everything you see is from me and my computer, except for my mod started a eclipse account on TikTok. <laughs> they, they ripped some of my clips and put them up. But other than that, everything else is from me. Uh, is that is that something you like doing like is that because a lot of like for me as being a creator I 
I stray away from having other people do things because I like the process. I like the uh, right, um, kind of the control in it. I don't feel like a lot of people can do the the style that I want and the style because I I want a certain way and I don't I don't want to give away that freedom. Maybe if I was busier or something like that and I didn't have the time right. to. But is that something you personally like doing? Um, I love. Mm-hmm. I love editing. I've kind of got fallen more in love with editing now, especially with TikTok, because it's a lot more fun for me. TikTok's been really fun for me, but YouTube editing is a little is a little monotonous because it takes a long time, and I'm used to doing TikTok more now. Mm-hmm. So, but I I would say yes, I enjoy editing more more than the average creator, to be honest. Because, I mean, most people like like we talked about earlier, a lot of people just stream and then they take a full gameplay and put it up on their YouTube yeah kind of lazy with it which i understand because editing is not for everybody and nobody knows how, not a lot of people know how to do it but mm-hmm. yeah, you do i think s- eventually just for the sake of efficiency i'll offload some of my stuff but i'm mm-hmm. like you i like to keep control creatively because i have like pretty high standard for quality of stuff but i think there is some there's some way to do it right like you could find someone who you enjoy the way that they could edit like I don't feel yeah. like it's for anyone to do. Like you can't just be like, "All right, you can edit a video," and and we're good. Like if you find someone who's like, who kind of yes. matches your style, I would say that that's a, a an exception. How's the um the like the creative process for uh, for a TikTok for you? Is it um do you? I see sometimes I know that like it's a better quality. Do you use your camera sometimes or? most times yeah i'm shifting more now towards using my camera all the time yeah I'm trying trying to do that i'm going to be adjusting my setup so i can move my camera a lot more because like right now and the way when i stream it's ver- it's horizontal but for tiktok everything's vertical so yeah it's kind of a struggle because the lens is really but i'm trying to use that a lot more mm-hmm. i mean phone i got the newest iphone so it's still a really good quality i just ocd about it yeah i, f- I feel like when because i'm the same way like sometimes i'll use my phone for a tiktok but i look at it and i'm like well i know my camera is like better and then like having other things be um, better quality is kind of it's really like itches or scratches my skin raw like it just makes me yeah not feel good about even though i know it's like decent quality but like i just know i have something better and it's like not right it doesn't sit right with me at all right and do you how, what what do you do to um to send because i see a lot of people do things differently and this is kind of just how someone finds it easier what do you do to send clips to your phone to upload to a tiktok like dropbox you, oh you do mm-hmm. see some i people, some people use some people use like google drive or mm-hmm. mail it to themselves or i know somebody that actually uploads directly to tiktok but it's, you can't do any editing with the tick like desktop TikTok. Oh, I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, I didn't know either until he told me. Yeah, I use I use Drop or Google Drive. That's what I I just Google Drive's always been kind of weird to download to a phone, so I always I just went with Dropbox. Yeah, I think that's really interesting, and I haven't heard of any anyone use Dropbox, but it makes sense. It really makes sense. Um, what so. You're obviously a pretty large TikTok following and or a decent amount of TikTok following. I don't know how you feel about that. Um, at where where were you, where was Burger before TikTok? What, where, what were you playing? What were you doing? So um, I streamed for about, I started streaming when Fortnite came out. That was kind of like when everything started for me. I was doing a lot of fitness content and then I did... Uh, Fortnite started streaming then and about a year into Fortnite, around like season four i stopped because i just wasn't liking Fortnite anymore so and at the, at the time i was only streaming and maybe uploading a youtube video every two weeks or something like that um and then i streamed modern warfare 2 for like two years until because i didn't like world war 2 i didn't like black ops 4 i've always kind of been a cod guy that's just kind of my my vibe and i didn't i played a little bit of blackout when that came out but then switched back to modern warfare 2 and then I saw an opportunity with TikTok before Modern Warfare came out. I was like, ooh, I like this TikTok app. It's really fun. So I started uploading like 60 second nukes to TikTok. That was like where I started, like skits and 
little Modern Warfare 2 highlights. And then when Modern Warfare came out, I actually took a break from streaming because I realized, like you can't, like we talked about, you you literally can't just stream. So I literally stopped streaming for like two months, did YouTube and TikTok, and then came back streaming. Uh, I like the the Modern Warfare Two. Is that is that your favorite game? Favorite favorite game of all time, yeah. A lot of people. I have a weird obsession with it. Everybody says that. <laughs> no, I'm I'm in the same boat. I. I am a young person. I I'm only 18, but I did play. Uh, I played Modern Warfare 2 on release because I had older brothers, and I was very young. But that was my introduction to Call of Duty was Modern Warfare 2. Same. So, that game. I feel like it all depends on when you got into Call of Duty is what your favorite game is. Um, and I feel like it's either Modern Warfare 2 or Black Ops 2 for yeah. mo for 90 percent of people. Yeah, I see that a lot. Um, a lot of people have hot takes on on the greatest Call of Duty game of all time. But at the end of the day, I get that it's uh, it's obviously opinion based. Um, just kind of the memories that you have and the nostalgia feeling. But I, uh, yeah, Modern Warfare Two. What what were you doing in Modern Warfare Two? Like, on release, what what guns were you using? How disgusting were you, or not disgusting were you? Uh, I was horrible when I first started playing. Um, <laughs> my favorite guns were the M4, the Vector, and the Intervention. And I sniped for a while, but I never got into quick scoping. I don't know why. I just have never been a big like fan of the trick shot kind of quick scoping community. I I love sniping, but not like the. I don't know. I compared to skateboarding. It's kind of like a unique thing yeah you're... i've always just been like a run and gun try to drop nukes kind of guy yeah you're, you're coming you're coming at my baby there as the sniping community but yeah i i, definitely... I respect it it's just <laughs> i know i don't know why i just the trick shotting was always just weird to me my friends would do trick shotting lobbies for like three hours and i'm sitting here trying yeah, to play like search and destroy that's weird to me like um i i never really got into i never got into tri uh like quick scoping until like later but i i think i got you beat on how disgusting i was in in modern warfare 2 i uh i would use the acr with um, a grenade launcher oh, and, this, this. and one man army for obra yeah it's embarrassing and i don't really tell a lot of people so and everybody I would, did it yeah everyone did it what's your what's your favorite mw2 map of all time High rise, hundred percent. Are you ready for how nasty mine is? Wasteland. Wasteland's fun. Wasteland's an easy nuke map. Easy nuke map. One hundred percent. Easy nuke map. Easiest. I I I only got like maybe ten nukes when I back in the day, but I probably got like five hundred now on PC because like the lobbies aren't that good, so it's pretty easy to get nukes. But Wasteland is like a fifty-fifty. I'm getting a nuke. Intervention. Chill on top of one of the houses and just seven kills. Yeah. So you're in Carnage, correct? Yep. And uh, I think a lot of people, obviously, with Phase Five, <laughs> Phase Five out, um, does does Carnage have a G Fuel code? Yep. <laughs> you want to plug it? Nah, it's <laughs> called Carnage, but yeah. Um. Yeah. So a lot of people with Phase Five coming out, like obviously Phase is a unique opportunity for for people but um how how important do you feel orgs are for growth if if it's um kind of if, if they're necessary at all and and kind of your thoughts on on people thinking they need an org um i think from a see i'm a little bit different because i'm i've always been kind of a loner so I don't have a problem being on my own, and I was for the longest time. Um, but I think at a certain point, having a group of people around you that you, like, for instance, Carnage, like, I've always looked up to the people in Carnage, like all the videos they make, the team challenges, a lot of the individual creators. So having a lot of people like that around you, like you are the sum of the, I don't know how the saying goes, but you are the sum of the people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. So whether it be, you know, the guys from TikTok or Carnage, I think I've surrounded myself with a lot of good people. As far as like needing a team, I don't 
think you need a team, especially if you're a small creator. I think like the, the biggest thing I always tell people, I get a lot of DMs and it's kind of frustrating because for me it's so simple, but I, I realize that a lot of people don't understand it. The biggest thing that you can do to help yourself is not a team. It's your own content. Like no matter what, at the end of the day, it's how you make people feel the value you bring them, the entertainment, all that sort of stuff. So if I was a first time like creator in my first year of streaming or whatever, I would tell people you don't need a team because up until a certain point, like if you look at like the orgs in terms of like tiers, there's like, there's like phase clan and hundred thieves and NRG and stuff like that. And then there's teams like soar and carnage and stuff other teams like that and like up until that point i don't think it's beneficial for anyone yeah uh i definitely feel as if even if it did give you um like a, a viewer boost or something a lot of those are are aren't real like a lot of people don't if you're not in that team anymore they're not gonna come back and right. a lot of people you've seen people who have major opportunities and still don't succeed because they didn't put in the work. I think it's very important if you're going to join an organization. I think the biggest one that I've seen that really exceeded um, what, like, just on their own and probably didn't even need one was Wacky. He, he, um, I don't know if you know when he joined the team called North, at all but a couple, that was right but yeah that yeah. was like right when i literally he did that right after i met him yeah so when he joined north like then he just exploded but it wasn't because of the team yeah he was already on that track yeah he was already on that track no matter what and um i think what he did was not leave it to what the team was going to do he had it in his own hands and right. it's very impressive to see like because he was he was outgrowing the team by a long shot and and i've seen people who get into even bigger situations and don't succeed like that so i think it's all about your mindset and how you are as a person like i think you're better off by grinding and getting that experience of actually working and then if a team comes on or the opportunity comes up, then you're ready to to kind of get on that launch pad and just explode. Yeah, I agree. I think for me, like it was always, I was never like I I had my own small team with my with, with my homies for a long time. Um, that didn't work because they didn't care about content the way I do. Mm -hmm. Um, still love those guys, but they just it's not you know not not everybody wants to do stuff like this. So then after that, I was like. I'm going to go solo for a while. Um, and then Carnage had a recruitment challenge in December. And for me, it was always like nothing. It was like Carnage or Phase or nothing for me. Because if I'm going to join a team, I want it to be a respectable team, but I also want to be ready to bring value. And I think like, like Wacky... I knew that I was on a trajectory to where I was going to be able to bring a lot more value. I don't, I don't want to just take, I'm not, a, I don't want to take, I, I want to give the same way that, that I would benefit from the team. Yeah. I think that's super important and in a way that shows a lot about you to the point that like, it's worth having someone like you and, and the team and like, proving value like at the point if you want the team you got to make sure that they have no reason not to pick you up like you gotta you gotta give them like every reason to do it to so, like every stop you gotta you gotta mm -hmm. be you gotta be there and and do things right in a way um who's who's the top guy on twitch for you like who who do you not necessarily model after but um like inspiration wise and and their work ethic and their content i think the best streamer in the world is the doc just based on 
he's got a, he's he, he's on a whole different level from literally everyone else. But as far as people I look up to, um, I would say Merks is is an obvious one, just because he's kind of similar to me in a way. He's like a normal guy that just has a good vibe about him, loves playing video games, and loves building a really good community. Um, he's from Michigan too, so I'm also from Michigan, so that's kind of cool. Um, Ninja, obviously, because his story, you know, such a long grind, and then to have it all pay off. I'm trying to think of somebody that isn't, wouldn't be like an obvious or cliche one. Um, probably forgetting someone that I would be like, oh, that guy. Oh, one of someone that not many people have ever heard of. One of my one of my friends, Nibs. He's an insane, 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 insanely underrated streamer. Um, super high quality. Closest thing that I've seen to like a doc kind of universe. I don't know. Those, those are the kind of people that I look up to as far as streaming goes. Yeah, I uh, I think Nick Merckx is up there for, for a lot of people. The community that he built is something worth trying to emulate. Um, just kind of the, the tight-knit family that, that it seems like you're in. And especially Doc. I think he's got the strongest I think he's got the strongest community. Him and yeah. Doc. Yeah. Doc's community is ride or die. I think. Yep. Um he's just he he's a performer and it's it's amazing to see what he can do for hours on end of constant high yeah. energy. It's insane. There you, you if you're a streamer you you understand how much that can take out of you in in a day but what he does is is unlike anyone else and to the quality that everything in his stream is and to to just the size of of that community is just incredible it's absolutely yeah. incredible what about um i know you said that you were one of the uh, first people to post gaming TikToks, but is there anyone who was either right there beside you, or could have been even underrated on TikTok or or above you, um, that really drove you um, to do better and post better content? Um, yeah, there there is one guy who does a lot of um, skit type stuff. I can't, I I can never remember his name. But he he didn't he never posts gaming content, but it's all gaming related like skit type mm -hmm. stuff that people can connect to. Yeah. So as far as that got me really started on skits, um, there wasn't a lot of like I'm being honest, there really wasn't that many people posting vertical like actual in game clips yet when I first got on. Um, one of my first things to blow up was cl a class setup that I did, and that kind of that's when i realized i was like okay it hit a million in like 18 hours and i was like what the heck and I, that's when i was like okay gaming content really does actually work on tiktok um but i think recently um i've gotten a lot of push to not only post just clips but to to actually get more into original and created creative content from a lot of the guys that I'm friends with, like Luch, Sally, Mark Clark, um, who else? like Manu, stuff like that. Cause that's a lot more fun than, and people don't just like, there's a, there's so many people getting on TikTok now that are just taking a horizontal clip and just tossing it on there. It's just the laziest mm -hmm. thing. And I want to stand out. So I've kind of left posting clips to my mods now. And I try to create more original stuff. Um, but the way I look at TikTok for me now, it's not just going to be gaming. I have a lot of like plans and ideas for like, for instance, this podcast, I might take a clip from this and put it up there or my own podcasts or like vlogs. I want to dabble more into like vlogging and I want to, I don't want to just be a gamer. I, I like, I have a, I have my goals and everything right in front of me on a piece of paper and on a sticky note, I, I have more than just a gamer because I, I don't want to get pigeonholed into being like a class setup guy 
or mm-hmm. just being a gamer. I want people to to connect with me and I want to build a community with them and not just have people want to watch me slay out in a game, you know? Yeah, I think that's um like Sorry, that was a really long answer. <laughs> no, 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 I enjoy I enjoyed it. Um I think that's a very good uh i i just i took one thing from i listened to the whole thing but i did take one thing that i i really do want to talk about and that's the the getting stuck uh in a certain niche you know uh i feel like a lot of people especially on tiktok who who see one thing work and they they keep repeating it um you see, yeah you see you see that a lot where uh, they have one video go viral and then they do the same thing over and over again instead of innovating and, and trying to make the new best thing instead of... Right. Uh, um, so where... There's a lot of... TikTok encourages that. There's a lot of... Yeah. There's always that viral song or that viral mm-hmm. yeah. format. Yeah, that's actually very true that things kind of just repeat each other. And... Um, what's what's that like is there is there a fear there that that you kind of are is that what's motivating you to to try to get out of that kind of hole of being a war zone guy or like is it war zone or is it like you don't want to be tied to a game or you just don't want to be tied to the 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 content that you make i think my content I think a lot of people look at it like it's either it's either I guess what's the word um what's the what's the name for a streamer who goes between any game they don't care what game it is what is that called Mm. uh shoot I think people look at it black and white regardless whether I find the word for it people (laughs) think like you like there's either people that have the idea where you're just gonna make content around one game or you're just gonna do everything and I look at it as the pillar of what I'm going to do is going to be always based around gaming and call of duty. But I also want to sprinkle in personality and things that people are attracted to other than gaming. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you look at people like Nick Merckx and swag, for instance, on YouTube, there, it's a very cookie cutter process of just posting class set of videos on YouTube. But people stay for the personality and for the gameplay, not just. So I look at it kind of in that way, not a black and white type of thing. Yeah. I think it's, that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Uh, I think it's super important to be able, I feel like a lot of people get into the, like, I'm super good at this game. So I'm going to post like that type of stuff and like the gameplay. And then they get sucked into a hole and, in creating content on the internet i've done it for the past like five six years i i've had times where i've thought about like how i don't want to be stuck to one game and or one thing because because creating content is a lot different than just being good at the game like a lot of people can just be good at fortnite and and post fortnite videos but like you see when fortnite isn't doing as good and people have to like they're not able to to switch over as well as other people like like the nick mercs like shroud or any of these people who who can go from game to game and then you have these people who built their names just on on those types of games and then when it goes kind of down the drain i don't i don't want to bash on fortnite but um when it the views aren't as what they were and the money is not as what, what what it was and events aren't happening and things like that it seems like a lot of these people are are struggling to to kind of get out of that hole that they've dug themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I think a lot of the uh if we look at like the Call of Duty League, there's a lot of pros that like they're insane at the game, but all they do is just like in the off season even, they just stream. They don't they don't And now that the league has gone down from like 56 to 48 or, or 60 something to 48 players in 4v4 you know there's only 50 people that are technically pros right now and a lot of people lost their job quote unquote mm-hmm. so they don't have anything to fall back on because they weren't creating content or at least making an effort to do something because 
I look at this as like a marathon, not a sprint sort mm -hmm. of sort of deal. Like I might I might sacrifice some short term growth now, but in the long term I'm going deeper. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <sighs> I think there's only like probably maybe ten people in the CDL who who could could actually like stop now and have a career and something that they've already built. I'm sure a lot of them have a decent Twitter following to to kind of build something like maybe sustainable, but they don't have that experience of of grinding out the yep. the streams and posting YouTube videos. Like yeah, sometimes you'll see a video here and there, but it's it's never consistent. It's super hard to get your videos out there. I th I think personally it's super important to be consistent with things like that um for algorithm reasons for other reasons in general and i i don't i don't feel as if there's a future in that with a lot of these uh like cdl pros they're not really working on on uh, setting up a future for themselves mm -hmm. especially if you look at how they switched to pc this year like I, I I've said I've put it on my I put it on my timeline and I have it bookmarked in my tweets because I I'm gonna pull it out when it happens. Eventually, COD's gonna switch to mouse and keyboard, and when that happens, there's gonna be carnage. There's not gonna be, a, you know, 95% of the console players are gonna, or the controller players are gonna be screwed. Yeah, I I was listening to some some podcast. I think it was Nade Shot's podcast, and he was. They were talking about the mouse and keyboard switch and how if it if it happens how many pros would be able to stick there and they're like there's maybe top three players who could play keyboard and mouse and that's not for for a, a long the, like the longevity of it like it's that's for maybe a year and they're not even the top pros anymore before people catch up yeah yep. and the only thing that they would have is like the cod knowledge until people start to kind of pick up on things and mm -hmm. and then the ball starts rolling and then every controller former controller players out and it's just a whole new scene of people and i i don't know that that just seems that seems like inevitable at this point if they're yeah. already they're making one switch to it. i really hope that they give them like a two or three year heads up on that yeah. because one that you can't just do that to the pros. That'd be a slap in the face. Mm -hmm. And then two, you'd lose a lot. You'd lose a lot, lose a lot of personalities that way. Like Scump would be done. Yeah. All the all the top personalities in the league would be done. Well, yeah, Scump's. You see him now pulling. I don't know, like maybe six six to ten thousand viewers on Twitch. And uh, why would he switch to mouse and keyboard? Like he, there is no right. way. There is no way he would go through struggle of not being. He would just be like, all right, I'm streaming Warzone now. Like, people are still going to yeah. watch. Like, I'm sure he could. I'm sure he could, yeah. but it's whether, you know, it would be worth. Yeah, I mean, is it worth, like, one more? Like, because at that point, like like I said before, it, it'll take a, a year, two years, three years before, like, you just push out. Because right. already people, like, mouse and keyboard. I know you, you play mouse and keyboard, right? Correct. Uh, when when did you have you always been or were you a console um i switched i think black ops 3 was my last like actual console the like, game and then i stopped playing cod for a while because i didn't like the games infinite warfare advanced warfare world war 2 so i was playing like fortnite and league of legends and those are both pc games mostly mm-hmm so I kind of built up skills that way, and then I hopped on Modern Warfare 2 because I could actually play Modern Warfare 2 on PC versus you, you really can't on 360. Mm -hmm. um, so I practiced a lot doing that. Played a little bit of Blackout. Um, but Modern Warfare is really the first good Call of Duty on PC. Like That's the reason there's so many people switching to PC now because the, the, game, is actually feel, the game actually feels like Call of Duty now. Like Before Black Ops 4, it didn't feel like COD on mouse and keyboard or pc in general mm -hmm. so this year is kind of my first actual year of going really hard on 
Call of Duty FPS with yeah. keyboard and mouse. But I've been on keyboard and mouse since I dropped the controller, Black Ops 3. Yeah, I. that's always oh, been... Sorry, What'd you say? I said I don't even know where my controller's at. No. Um, yeah, I think that's something that's like that I wanted to kind of do was just eliminate the controller in general. Mainly because I spend most of my money rebuying controllers um it's very not cost efficient i love um i i don't remember controllers i hear that people talk about them breaking all the time i know i don't ever remember controllers breaking like i've had this same 360 controller yeah i have the same 360 controller too but i had this for so long but i've gone through 95 of these things that's crazy these ps4 i still have the same I use an Xbox One controller now. Like, this is the best controller ever made. Xbox honestly has better built controllers. I'm yeah. More I think positive. so too, honestly. Um, but yeah, I I've wanted to do it. I I spent a lot of money on peripherals. Um, I see that you uh, what keyboard do you use? Ampro Two. No, I have I that I used to use that that used to be my uh, main keyboard, and then I switched over to a Steel Series keyboard about a year ago. I have two, I've always had two keyboards because I have two PCs. Yeah. So um, now I just picked up a new, another Steel Series keyboard two days ago. So now I have a Steel Series um, Apex Pro with the Omni Point switches and the Steel Steel Series Apex Seven with brown switches. And and you you like the the Steel Series keyboards? Mm-hmm. I right. love Steel Series products. I've had I bought this headset. Yeah, I I like one of my first big purchases, and I've. One of my favorite I'm ab- I'm about to as well. You you sold right. me on it when you when you pulled the mic out. That's like oh man, yeah. The AirPod. Yeah, you sold oh, that's me. That's weird. On. I just heard myself talking. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is. I love this thing. Yeah. They they look super clean. They um. They're a lot less. I mean, I am sponsored by Steel Series, so I don't want to like yeah. obviously take my word for. No, I you know, I grain, I, of, grain I, of salt, but I I I love Steel Series products. I also agree. Um, I feel I don't. I'm not gonna completely bash competitors of Steel Series, but I feel as if um, a lot of things that I have bought in um, example as a headset, I um, the quality to uh, price is not is not very good, and I feel right. like especially with Steel Series, what really sells me on Steel Series is that they're on social media and they they use tiktok and stuff yep. so i feel like they they care they about great they have a great presence yeah and i feel like they care about um care about people because they just interact like most of the time i see them in a comment section of some place and it's like that that seems like a a company that i want to back i right. want to be behind and a lot of other companies don't do that and i think that's really important yeah impressive and it's really cool to see them do that I feel the same way that's one of, that's one of the one of the driving reasons why like steel series is my number one the number one company i wanted to work with when i thought about like in my head a couple months ago about sponsors and stuff like that it's mm-hmm. just because i love the whole the whole brand the image their products everything's clean they care about people yeah i think that's so. super it's really really important it's really important not to just do something because of a name. And I feel like you have to believe in the product because that will shine through. Um, Yeah. People can tell no matter what people will tell. Yeah. If if I tell you, this is the best bottle I've ever had. Like you're not going to believe me unless like people can just tell humans can sense that, that vibe if you're lying or if you're, just doing it for money if i told you that this scuff controller is the best controller that i ever use i'd be completely lying and this thing broke instantly (laughs) and i'm pretty sure i've cut all ties with ever having a scuff sponsorship but it's okay um worry about that yeah uh i got a mouse keyboard yeah for real um you went uh full-time streaming yes okay and i i feel like i don't know how many times people ask you this i don't know at all if any walk us through 
the thought process and and the fears and how you dealt with kind of coming up with making that decision and taking that leap to go full-time streaming there wasn't a lot of fear because i I, I'm like very, like I said before, I'm very analytical. So I, this has been a plan of mine for three years. You know, when I first started, I was like, you know, I, I dropped a bunch of responsibilities because I knew that this was something that I was going to take serious. And if I didn't, I would regret it. So I dropped a, a bunch of responsibilities, social life, girlfriend. Um, I held a job for a long time that I didn't need to. I switched my degree so I could go online so I could be at home to do all the, like everything was very thought out so i had been thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it for so long that when the time finally came i had saved up enough money i saw that the the time was right you know i was starting to make a lot more i was getting a lot more attention i knew that if i didn't make that jump that i was going to miss out on a lot and i mean within the first month of me going full time i got my two sponsors and it broke my my sub count record and just everything started exploding so i knew it was i knew it was the right time so there wasn't a lot of fear um and i i trust myself and i believe in myself enough to to keep going and i mean i i have a i live at home still i have you know supported by really good parents so um there wasn't a lot of fear if i'm i, I don't want a lot of people and say i was scared to do it yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think yeah it is a scary thing i get if like that's a huge thing yeah different circumstances all that sort of stuff but for me it was just so planned yeah i think that's good that everything was okay and like taking a leap like that is it got to be um scary for some people and like not knowing if the time is right but i feel like in in your situation that uh that you made a good choice i feel like to keep yourself going i feel like it's important to to kind of at your position i think you you just did a good thing i i really do um i'm i'm a full supporter of of people going all in in their dreams and uh you said that you would regret it if you didn't try and I, I feel that about a lot of my dreams that a lot of people want me to give up on. And I think it's super important to at least make an effort. And if that's your best effort, then, then I think you'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's probably going to be some lingering in the back of your head about like wanting it to succeed. But I feel like giving it your best shot is, is the only service right. you can do yourself. I think if I think it I think one of the biggest things is you have to be real with yourself like you have to be your and that's I was kind of always been I've always beat myself up too much on stuff so I've always just been super real with myself like I don't need people to tell me the the, the cons or the dangers or you know what could go wrong because like I'm thinking about that I've already thought about that a hundred times so I think you have to be real with yourself like are you a good content creator what are you doing wrong? What can you do better? Like, what is what is the ceiling for what you're doing? Like, if you're not real with yourself, then you're kind of setting yourself up for failure, mm -hmm. in a way. But yeah. like, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be 90 years old and think, you know, I went the regular route instead of taking something that I know I probably could have done. Because I mean, I have my degree, so like everything. I don't. There's not a lot of risk in this for me. Because, I, like I said, I just planned it out, got my degree, saved up money, and just took the jump. Yeah, I, I I resonate. Like, the stuff that you just said really, you know, hit me for a lot of reasons. Uh, did people ever um, say that, that you weren't going to be – I mean, obviously, I'm sure there's people who said that. But, like, it, it actually in your life that said you weren't going to be able to achieve something like – even what you have right now and i know that you're you're hungry for more and you're gonna keep pushing but even where you're at right now did, did they say um, anything to you as far as my parents go no because i never told them until i was ready to go full-time like that was always my thing i i didn't tell them anything I just what let them think whatever they wanted until i was able to, to show like have something you know 
money like or just a following or some sort of something to show for everything i've been doing mm -hmm. so for a long time i just let them think that i was just sitting down here playing video games um so they didn't really have they didn't couldn't have an opinion really um my friends some of my friends you know they didn't they don't understand it or they make fun of me for it but i mean i love those guys so nobody really was like no you can't do this except for like some of my friends but i mean now i don't know i kind of a tough one no no i i haven't really had like a haters yet <laughs> i mean if i have i don't see them <laughs> i haven't had that many toxic people online like i don't really get many dms of people being jerks or anything yeah i i mean there there's a lot of kind of stigma about people in my life criticizing what i do i mean i they just they don't it, it's hard because of kind of what i get compared a lot to to other people in my life like my siblings and right. it's very unfair because, you know, my one of my siblings is a is a doctor and yeah. and my dad's a doctor. And so when I'm not doctor level, it's like yeah, it's, it's already tough. a disappointment. But I, it never has like actually got to me. It's kind of just one of those things that are like, oh, that's annoying. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's good that that you've been able to to keep your you know head up and keep grinding and not have negative energy around you it sounds like i'm always very impressed i uh, about how people are raised and i know that sometimes that people some are raised poorly and they that's the kind of the reason that they are who they are but i, mm -hmm. I can tell that your parents are good and supportive and that's kind of the reason that you you are how you are and uh, hats off to them and you're you're a good good guy and i appreciate you for coming on the podcast i appreciate you for inviting yeah uh so i think we are pretty well done i appreciate you again for coming on the podcast this was another dream come true um keep going with what you're doing and we're going to be keeping tabs on you and watching you grow into where you want to be in the future. For sure. Okay. Um, you can find uh, Burger at, is everything Bob Burger? Everything is at Bob Burger besides my Twitch, which I luckily got Burger. <laughs> the partner. You, you, are, you are a Twitch partner, right? Yep. How'd that feel? Um... I mean, it was, it was really cool. Obviously, something I looked forward to for a long time, but I don't know. I don't put too much weight into it. At the end of the day, it's kind of just a check mark and a few. It's more respect and check mark <laughs> and a couple extra features and stuff like that. But it's cool. Yeah. Wow. You, I, I would. You didn't really seem that excited about the check mark. <laughs> I don't know. I just. I don't. I've never been someone to put a lot of stock into stuff like that i guess obviously it's something that like you know you gotta get like mm -hmm. if you want to be one of the best people to do it then you you gotta get stuff like that that's just part of the process i guess i don't know yeah yeah i you know i say this i said this about stan exceptional exceptional guy and i'll say it about you too great guy thank you for coming on the podcast you like i know you didn't know who i was and it i yeah, know i never <laughs> never met you before yeah so i appreciate it so much for you giving uh putting trust in me to ask you some okay questions i i spent a lot Wait, you did a good you did a good job i appreciate that so much um i spent all night like three nights in a row thinking about what i would what i would ask you and how i would present this but um i'm i'm super excited to to see how this turns out and see how the people receive it so make sure you guys have, I mean, if you're already not following Burger, uh, you probably are, but, um, yeah, go follow him. See, uh, see on the journey. We're going to watch him for the next years to come. And I'm excited to see what you do. I hope we can have another, another conversation about something in the future and, uh, check back in. Um, I'll definitely try to keep in touch with you and, uh, 
see how you're doing every once in a while to make sure everything's going good. Um, 100%. And I will, I will definitely be stopping by in your streams. If I do watch, I just don't comment because. Yeah, that's how a lot of people are. Yeah, but I just lurk. Um, maybe I'll throw a couple gifted your way. You can see that's me. Say what's up. But I, again, again, I'll stress it more and more. I appreciate this so much. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for listening to the podcast.